the dialects are on the beach. Explain. The dialects are on vacation. Recreate. Recreate. Unacceptable. Dialects cannot swim. We will use floaties. Inflate. Inflate. I wanted to go to Disney World. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Warning. Events of time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Halfer, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson with Sci-Fi Channel's Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci-Fi. Sliceofsci-Fi.com <laughs> That actually hurt my brain. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm Michael Armenengay. I have so many things running through my head that are really wrong right now, and I'm Brian Brown. <laughs> yes, and I always have things going through my head that are totally wrong, and I'm Tim Adamick. I am wrong. I'm trouble. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair trouble enough. is wrong in all the right ways. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. man. Uh, right, or right in all the wrong ways. Uh, right in all the wrong yeah. ways. There you go. I it's been know. one of those weeks. Yeah. Anyway, this is the listener feedback show. This is the time when we talk about your mm, things that you sent into us and topics and interesting conversations that you start around here. Something like that. Thanks. Right. Yeah, whatever. Stuff. 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 The, issues, the, the, the number is 206339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Send us something interesting. Amuse us. Dance, monkeys. Dance! <laughs> Good day, Slicers. Travis from Sydney here. Just wanted to comment about Tim. I noticed he's, he seems to be a little bit cheery of late. I wanted Wait, to just say, all the job of taking the little blue pills there, mate. Now, when you go into the bar, remember the pickup line? That's not a knife. That's a knife. <laughs> wow. Uh, Trampus, I just have to say, really don't. Uh, don't do it anymore. I got nothing, dude. Yeah, I. it hurt my brain to hear, hear jolly old England as well as a very poor southern Australia. Uh, <laughs> y'all. I expect y'all. to hear all of this. Oh, I, that's what I'm saying, y'all. I did like the Scotsman mixed in as yeah, well. Yeah, I know. It was all over the place. No, really, Trampus. I was confused. Yeah, I know. Hold it's me. Last, last week's Aussie thing just is exploded what, this week. Well, it's I mean, just, it's like, uh, what I really want again is our, our female Australian callers. Oh, hell there yes. There you go. Because they're awesome. Down under. G'day, Slices. This is Kurt A. The A stands for Australia. And down here, down under, we don't really have a problem with sex on the telly. Well, at least as long as you don't fall off. Cheers, <laughs> mates. Wow. <laughs> I thought Kurt A was in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everybody's getting into the thing, huh? Hey, everybody oh, wow. jumped on this one this oh, week. Okay. Hey, it's bring Sex. out your crappy Australian accent, accent. week on yeah. Slice of Sci-Fi. <laughs> Next thing you know, we'll have that Denny guy calling us again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait. we couldn't possibly. Wait. No, never mind. Hey, folks, it's still on Berlin. I just wanted to tell Denny that I'm real sorry about his animals, but there's nothing I can do about it. I don't know where you get the idea that I can control Sweet Leaf. I can just barely get him to do what I pay him for. Beyond that, it's hopeless. Actually, the assassinated cat and dog's head in your bed don't sound like Sweet Leaf to me. He talks a lot of trash, but he's actually quite a gentle little guy. Last time we renegotiated his contract, he did say something about having a contact with the Twinkalini family. I'm afraid that you may have pissed off the fairy godfather. All I can say is, good luck. Nice. (laughs) <laughs> the twinkle <laughs> Oh my god. There's oh. a, a Dillo, if you do not build that up into a bit and send it to us, you are wrong, dead dude. To, you, you are, are wrong. Dead to us. <laughs> Some, someday I may come to you for a favor. I can see oh, that. Wow. Yeah. You know yeah. what? And you're gonna get drafted to yeah, have that run through I'm sure, the vocalizer yeah. or whatever the hell. Wow. <sighs> Hey, Slicers, this is X Benedict from Texas. Uh, I was just calling because past Friday was the first episode for Torchwood Miracle Day, yes. and mm-hmm. I know we were all excited for it to come back. Totally uh, about My it. wife especially, because she's got this huge crush on Captain Jack, and it's been having mm-hmm. a draw. Um, but beyond that, 
I'm not entirely sure if I like the way Stars is doing it because it seems like they're going to drag it out to the very end, and I really hope they don't. But they showed a lot of previews for the upcoming stuff, and it looked really good. So I'm just hoping this first one was a little slow and just all set up. Um, what do you all think? I think you're absolutely right. I think it's going to be that way. I haven't watched it all, so mm-hmm. I'm a little bit behind. But for me, I think uh, that's what they're going to do. They're going to set it up. That, and I'm, that's exactly what it was. This 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 first episode was, I mean, it was like a sprint, a a thousand yard dash done in 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 three minutes. I mean, it was insane how much stuff they tried to pack in to that first episode to try and catch people up that are not familiar familiar with the oh, show. Okay. So that's why it felt so. It didn't feel Info like dumpy. normal. It really was. Cliff it was notes for Torchwood. It really was. I mean, it was info dump, info dump, info dump. For those of us that watch the show, it's like, yeah, we know this. Yes, we know this. Yeah, we know this. Let's get right. on with it. Get on with now, it. Get on with it. How many episodes do they have? Um, or how many episodes are they doing? I don't know, actually. Are they doing I, the six I, that, that the BBC was? Or did they, are they going like a full 12 or, or the I 10? Or? I do not know. I think it's just six. I honestly I do don't not remember know. what they said, so... Hmm. I, I, I honestly do not know, but I, I'm expecting this next episode to redeem itself for us fans of Torchwood tremendously. I really am. I think this was just all set up. Hey, iPad boy, to the interwebs. Oh, I left it out there. Damn you. It's last year's this is X Benedict again from Texas. I'm listening to last week's listener feedback show, and I, I just can't help but notice that everybody's bringing up the fact of watching... Uh, risque or porn with your kids, but the problem that I have is when I'm watching something and my parents happen to be there, it gets a little creepy because, you know, my dad starts breathing heavy, his eyes glaze over, (laughs) my mom leaves the room, and everybody just has this sense of, dear God, what is going on? And it really annoys the crap out of me. I wish they would just grow up and be adults about it, but they can't, so, you know. But that's just my thing. Y'all have a good one. Nice. Puritanical really? parents. <laughs> <laughs> really? I have that hard time with me, my watching parents, you know, especially the technical stuff from, you know, the hentai. No, you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's tough. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, you know. Really? I'll you, watch different shows with your parents. Jim's <laughs> 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 like, you guys, you guys really had to go there? Yeah, we did. Sure, why not? Wow. <laughs> why not? <laughs> what the hell? You know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the little things that count, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I'm th- I thought I was the one to go five feet over the line. <laughs> <laughs> line? There's a line? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're we're, we're good. Gonna take right, a we're break. Gonna go. We're gonna take gonna a break and uh, drink more. <laughs> yeah. For years now, you've been listening to the show and hearing the heartbreak. Podcasters whose only mistake was being born poor. Fifteen thousand pod faded last week, but thousands more podcast on because of sponsors that made a difference in their show and sometimes actually saved it. We know you thought about it, put it on a nice to-do list, but somehow never got around to it. Even though the link is right there and you've been getting this show for free all this time. Maybe it gets lost in how busy you are. Maybe you're just taking your time. But Michael R. Menenge and his friends don't have till the 12th of never. They need you today. And you're just sitting, goofing off at the moment, so why not now? Is it the 16 cents a day, sponsoring a podcast, good microphones, a nice mixer, even a hosting account? It's the best thing that can happen to a dime, a nickel, and a penny. And it's not like you'll feel bad after you do it. You'll feel great about sponsoring the show every day when you get up. And you don't have to worry about Farpoint Media. 20 cents of every dollar goes right to help out the show and the rest replenishes the magic fridge. So why not now? You know what I think it is? You just forgot the website. So here it is. www.sliceofsci-fi.com Slice of Sci-Fi is one of the Internet's oldest and most trusted podcasts for over 200 episodes. They've brought you the best in science fiction podcasting. So why not now? And remember, as soon as you give, we promise not to send you a picture of Michael R. Menengay. If you don't, well, 
let's just say I wouldn't check your mail for a while. And I don't think you want to have to explain that to little Summer Brooks, do you? So give now. The Adventures of Sweet Leaf. What have they done to my poor Sweet Leaf? If they fed him to something, I'm gonna... Oh, you know, having already killed him really cuts down on my options. Maybe he's in here. Sweet Leaf! My poor darling! What have they done to you? Hey, Clipper Baby, come over here and give me a kiss. You've been drinking? I have not. I've just been sitting here talking about good body works. Let me help you get up. Here, put your arm around my... Yep. You don't need to put your hand there. Oh, Clipper, honey. Or there, either. Ooh, you feel good. Whoa. You're wasted. Come on, show me to the controls and we'll get you strapped down. Then I'll land this thing. Whoa, are we flying through a storm, baby? We're in orbit well above the atmosphere, and there are no storms up here. We're in a ship as steady as a planet. And how come when I try to put my foot on the floor, I miss? Because you're really, really stoned. Something we're going to have to have a long talk about when you sober up. Is this the control stick? Yeah, this button here is... That's the screen. I wonder what the screen's showing, though. I can't make nothing out of that. Move out of the way so I can figure out how to use the navigation board. Just move out of the way while I... Watch out for getting close to the ground, though. Alien detected in Sector 5. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. Wow. And it just keeps getting more interesting. <laughs> stranger and stranger. Uh, I can only imagine where it's going from here. Uh, Hot. Good stuff. Oh, man. That fairy on fairy action, you know. Mm-hmm. No, it's fairy on pixie action. Get it right. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Indeed. there are different. You're right. Yeah. Interspecies. Hey, Slicer Chief, New Jersey. Listen, I'm calling to apologize. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm listening, um, I was on vacation for a week, and I'm behind on the shows, and I'm listening to the latest feedback show, trying to catch up, and you guys are talking about, or someone called in with a review about how Transformers is not that bad, and you should go say it. No, no, Slicers, I apologize that I was away for a week, I couldn't warn you in time, <laughs> don't go see it. Yeah. Maybe well, wait for right. video, and if you have absolutely nothing else to do, Besides, I don't know, shovel out your sand pool or uh, <laughs> scrub pool. down your uh, your swimming pool with a to- toothbrush to get all the algae off. Then maybe go watch it. Wow. Uh, my wife and I almost left. It is long really? and boring. Now, that's not to say there's not action. There's tons of action. But it's all stuff you've seen before. Yeah. Just and <laughs> it was just boring. I was kind waiting to see something new how or much something you've seen at before. least halfway decent <laughs> writing-wise, and it's just horrible. Yeah, that, that that was awesome. Uh, if you have not checked this out, I do believe it's on YouTube. Who, who's got it? Is it College Humor or YouTube? What? The, 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 the comparison? Shot, the shot-for-shot shot comparison. Oh, oh, yeah, it's on it's, YouTube. It's, it's, on, YouTube. it's on Slice of Sci-Fi. Yeah, we have it as well. Actually, well. Actually, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, there you go. go Chance yeah, for more. See it again? For yeah, the yeah, first what, time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, one of the things that, that, that I did read about it was that, uh, yeah, while it's action-packed, the action seems to be mostly centered around humans and not the robots that you really are going to the movie to see. Really? Yeah. Uh, so are you saying that Shia LaBeouf and Michael Bay lied to us? <sighs> no, no. That's impossible. Hey, Slicer, Shane from New Jersey, calling in once more about the Game of Thrones controversy. Oh, fantastic. Um, my original call has been about, do you think HBO is slicing off a chunk of its audience by being as epic sexually as they are. No. And no. Uh, no. a lot of people say, no, they're being true to the film, mm-hmm. be true to the books, and uh, it's HBO. It's kind of what's expected. Right. Uh, one of my things is uh, the scene between Jamie and Cersei in the tower where they throw Bran out the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they're pretty much fully clothed. You don't see anything, but you get the whole idea of what, what's going on. Right. In the very beginning, when... Uh, Tyrion's having the war go down on them. You know what's going on, but you don't really see anything. And right. my thing is, don't you think that if they had made the more scene, more of the, the graphical, more graphic scenes like scenes like that, it would open up a wider audience? No, I mean yeah. uh, to be, I, I think that there's there's 
there's levels of uh, oh boy, where boy, okay, all how, right. How do we so, get to through? Uh, so this, let's, how do we get through this? Because let's address the first scene he was talking about, absolutely. where you have Jamie and Cersei in the tower. If you if you have read the books, you know that they are are both looking at this thing as we need to hurry, we need to get through with things, right. and having them fully clothed in a tower where no one's around really lends to that without explaining it in the nine paragraphs that George R. R. Martin took. Exactly. You, you know, know, and I was thinking another scene that didn't even make it into the TV show is when Ned and Caitlin are finished with yes. they they have sex at one point. Yeah, but all um, you get is is as you said finished all you get is is it was it was her viewpoint chapter where she turns around right. and says yes you know everything was great well and, and she's naked and she gets up at oh, one yeah, point you're right so they did when the when the master comes when in. the master comes in yes yeah. and so they cut that one out completely totally. right so i mean so they're trimming a lot of stuff out of the yeah. it's not even as graphic as the book what they're well, doing it, on it, tv it but is and it isn't it is and it isn't they're yes. putting they're putting in what is important to the story i now, do believe if i have one big fault with with the sex in 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 Game of Thrones, the TV show mm-hmm. was the um, the wedding and bedding of Daenerys. When you looked right. at that scene, it was very much this trembling girl, and, and I'm right. talking as the show. It was very much this trembling girl who was afraid, and it seemed like Khal Drogo didn't care at all for that. And it's totally when you opposite. read the book, it's yeah. like it's four pages of him being like the most caring, gentle person he could Correct. possibly be. Yes, and it almost appeared to me in the show as almost a rape, which well, it wasn't at all in the book. It w- it could have been in the book, but he didn't. That was the thing. How, However, exactly. I I, I yeah. think that might have been a change because I do like the growth that comes from from uh, Daenerys on that because she, yes. you see her as this trembling little flower at the beginning, and she grows into. Right being Khaleesi. I well, mean, that is huge. Like I said, I think, honestly, all of these are very planned steps to show you much about these characters in a little Absolutely. bit of time. Yes. Exactly. I mean, Littlefinger definitely, it says volumes about what he is because of the way he's having this info dump while these two uh, prostitutes uh, right. are going at it. Exactly. Yeah, and he seems and he's to just all be business, totally oblivious all business, right. to what's exactly. going on. Exactly. And that's why that happened. Not the fact that they were there doing it, but the fact that he was there just and so boom, completely... Boom. Boom. Well, in, yeah, he's he's sitting there going, I mean, yeah. ladies, this is how you conduct business. Do it this way. Do it that way. Oh, and by the way, here's how I want to take over the world. Yes. Exactly. You know, and to him, there was Muh-ha-ha. no difference Muh-ha-ha. between the two. Yeah. Muh-ha-ha. Yeah. No, I, it, it, everything about it. You really, <laughs> you really need to you watch know, a series. You know, I'm sitting here going, I need HBO. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you do. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, you I, really I can do. see it, but I don't know what you're talking about. But I do. We'll find it for you. Don't worry about it. The visual is there. Yeah, that's good. Hey folks, it's Dillo in Berlin. There's always going to be something in films that makes you uncomfortable. Absolutely. I live between a transvestite bar and a fetish club across the street from a bordello. So the sex stuff wow. is not really a big yeah. deal for me. I've been a horror fan for over 40 years, so explicit violence and gore don't faze me. But that movie, The Graduate, <laughs> really squicks me out. Oh, Rich you know? people acting snotty and being rude to each other yeah, is okay. really, really disturbing. Huh. And boring. I can see Y'all that. have fun. <laughs> or boring. Yeah, I can see that. Boring. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Detour. Wow. Did, did 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 we really bring up the graduate? <laughs> the graduate. <laughs> graduate. Sure. Yeah. Here's Why not? to you, uh, Mrs. Robinson. Robinson. <laughs> Jesus loves you more than, than you will know. Oh, that was so cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess it's, it, it is we really true. on this show for a while. It's really true. Yeah. It really speaks volumes of where your squidge points are. Oh, absolutely. You know? Oh, yeah. Where that is Dillo's as opposed to, you know, where most people would be like, oh, fetish bar. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, you know, it's my uh, clowns. It's clowns. Oh, dude. Oh, dude clowns when, in a van. When oh. they did when they did <laughs> it. <laughs> Clowns in a van? Clowns, Clowns in, a van. in a van. Hey, little boy, right. you want a balloon animal and some candy? That's right. I mean, really. <laughs> candy man. Driving up in the... the, the uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds legit. Let, let's move along, <laughs> shall we? Let's go. Hey, Slicers. It's Science Fantasy out of New York again. Uh, Torchwood Miracle Day, Episode 1. Yeah. I was underwhelmed. I mean, I'll keep watching, but one, and okay, this is just me, any time that Ruff Davies had a character say something about U.S. law, I was throwing stuff at the screen. Somewhere between, you know, the, the whole pedophile murderer gets <laughs> paroled because he can't be killed, can't be right. executed, mm-hmm. makes no sense. And then this thing at the end with, oh, wow, we're suddenly going to the U.S. because the CIA agent said so, even though he's in the U.K., has no authority to do it. Oh, but he quotes 
some, uh, some provision of law that makes yeah. sense, and suddenly he's in charge. Right. I, 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 you know, I, oh, hang on, no, hang on, hang you on. Know what, this I, I know exactly where he's coming from. He's I, a I law student, too. and you've heard me harp over and over right. and over again about the gun handling in these things. I Again, understand. Because I'm a gun nut, and that stuff drives me nuts. I understand it's I, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. But at the same time, come on, guys. This Suspend is, this is, your belief. This is yeah. Torchwood. We all know this is stock full of plut- plutonium. Plutonium. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. Plutonium. So, plutonium. plutonium. Makes the world run, go run round, basically. Yes, absolutely. Right. Like, Hollywood, nice. Hollywood, it's at the core of all of their reactors. <laughs> and it's absolutely. red plutonium. Oh, totally. Yeah. Not green. Red. Mm. Transformers 3. Absolute proof that Leonard Nimoy can make anything worth watching. Wow. The apocalypse here with the epiphany of the week. Thank wow. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, Leonard Nimoy was in Transformers? It, yeah, he was the voice. Of, he was a voice, yeah. yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, I can't. No, I, don't I don't know, know if that make it watchable. I guess it would be a little bit less disturbing and not make me not want to walk out as no, much. Either. But I don't know about saving it. No. Mm. Hey, Slices, it's Taz from Ottawa again. Uh, Howdy. Just another continuation on the sex on TV versus violence on wow, TV. Wow, we getting some issue. legs on that. Oh um, yes. First thing I would say is just we're all a product of our upbringing. Yes. Uh, and we tend to to reflect the values that we're raised with oh, um, no. and in some and in the United States we tend to generally because of the gun culture be more acclimatized to violence than we are to sex because of our puritanical back backstory totally but I also think there's something to it I I'm remember shocked. Sam early on in the conversation you saying disagree? something Never. to the effect of most of us don't have very graphic violence in our lives so we're able to sort of look at that and see it as fantastic <laughs> I don't know about that but sex hits close to home and I stopped watching the news a long time ago yeah. for that reason. A little more uncomfortable. I would say most. Many uh, of us are very un- are more uncomfortable with the sexual stuff on TV than the violence. Uh-huh. Just the mm-hmm. point to think about. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. It just has to go a lot of our culture. It really does. Mm-hmm. I mean, as uh, you know, Japan's a very good example of it, that that sex and nudity is rather blasé ish, mm-hmm. while violence is much more shocking. And at least it was I, it, 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 I'm saying the last it depends on the violence, because in Japan, right. sexual violence is very much glorified, where Sometimes. physical violence is not. Actually, you know who I really wanted to, to, to chime in on this is, I is disagree ben, with that. Oh, yeah. Our, our ben, ben Fu's in Japan because he's living there. Yeah. And I'd like to hear him his thoughts right. as somebody who lives there currently. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah. when, when you can go into a comic book store, a manga store in, in Japan, and buy a comic book from a character who is one of who's very wildly popular called Rape Man, yes. uh, they do glorify that quite um, a bit. Again, well, I think it's a subculture like anywhere oh, else. Yeah, absolutely. I, I Definitely. Think it's, but it's far more accepted in Japan than it would be here. Now, you would never get that put on no. on the, on a shelf here. Mm. Um, depends on where you're going. I, I was <laughs> going to really? say, I don't It'd know. It'd be very that. difficult too. You might, you might get a lot of people protesting out in front of the store that was selling it. But yeah, you I think it's find it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's when it's like pedophile man. That's yeah, a little more difficult to sell. That, you know. So I mean, again, I'd like to I'd like to hear some from one of our listeners yeah. that are in Japan currently, just as as an example, because again, it's the social the mores and how they've changed. I think really. Hey, Slicers, it's Arkel, uh, regarding my Transformers 3 call from the last listener feedback show. Um, my bad. I actually thought I'd made it clear in the call that I was, that it was a Shia LaBeouf that I was yelling at, not you guys. Oh, <laughs> but, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, know. I'm sorry. We missed Shia that. LaBeouf deserves- That's all right. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, Shia LaBeouf Don't, deserves to be let. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely go. Keep going. Send him some uh, harshly worded emails, Arco. Yes, there or you go. We'll we'll snail mail. We'll see if we can find his phone number for yeah. you. <laughs> hey, hello, Slice of Sci-Fi crew. This is Commander Chang from San Francisco. Just noticed something about Sean Bean, who seems to specialize in movies where he makes an abrupt exit in the middle. <laughs> yeah. We all knew what happened to him in Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. but have you noticed he did the same thing, made an exit in Equilibrium, mm-hmm. and yes. oh, yeah. disappeared in the middle of Roman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's done he's, that in a few movies. Characters tend to get killed off. You're right. Yeah. Uh, even Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings. Yeah, yeah Boromir. <laughs> Boromir, <laughs> yeah. he pretty much yeah. bit yeah. it early. Pin cushion. <laughs> oh, good old Boromir. <laughs> 
Uh-huh. Uh, it yeah. took 14 hours for him to go, oh, dude, I was so, so wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I was wasted on uh, p- pipe weed, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. That's it, yes. <laughs> Last year on Fringe, Peter felt that both universes would be better if he had never been born. Clarence, the apprentice observer, built a machine to implement that. This season, Olivia becomes a spinster librarian. (laughs) Walter gets stuck back in the mental institution. Walternet, on alternate Earth, forms a savings and loan and forecloses (laughs) all of alternate Earth. (laughs) Peter has a rethinking of it. And he's brought back, and everyone's happy. Wow. Just remember, every time a cell phone rings, a, an observer gets his fedora. Fringe. <laughs> it's a wonderful show. Nerdpocalypse here with the Epiphany of the Week. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Did Fringe go who? <gasps> wow. <sighs> no, it's, it's a fringe life. It's a uh? wonderful fringe life. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Hi, it's Lisa Clifford Crew. It's Commander Chang in San Francisco. You were talking about Michael Bay, The Island, and Transformers 3. Yeah. You might be interested to know that Michael Bay had recycled some of the footage from The Island for Transformers 3. Yes, yep. we reported that. We had watched yes. it. That little cheese with three uh, SUVs chasing the uh, good guys on the freeway. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, let's just say there's a couple scenes there. I'll be CGI up a bit. Uh, bit. Lift the street from the island. Uh, a, a bit. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, go, go check it out. Yeah, you, we've you reported on Slice of Sci-Fi. Obviously, yeah. you're not listening to uh, our show yeah. much. So, <laughs> so do we see Ewan McGregor in the background running somewhere? Yeah. Seek <laughs> <laughs> your credit. I don't even think Scarlett Johansson <laughs> can save the third Transformers movie. Good luck. Wow. Yeah. Hey there, Slicers. It's Justin from Kentucky here calling on the subject of Sci-Fi's new show, Alphas. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Wow, it was much better than what I was expecting. Me too. Yep. We set um, the bar low, yeah. Great concept. <laughs> great in execution of that concept. Wow. Writing mm-hmm. and the bad guy of the week was actually pretty damn cool. Uh, so for the pilot episode, A+. plus. Pretty much their strongest, their strongest pilot episode Mm. For a new series, no, I think the series for mm. of Warehouse. For no, 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 it's minutes. definitely uh, not so 33. 33 wasn't a pilot because the series I mean, you was. The entire season. Yeah, but 33 was the kickoff for the ser- it's, series. It's, exactly, and, but it wasn't a pilot. Remember, that's the true. miniseries was essentially an extended pilot. Now, I right. haven't seen it, but I was actually, I was on YouTube or something, and I saw a preview for the Alpha, and I was like... Why are my friends talking about this? Looks stupid, but so I guess it's maybe actually it's pretty. Not. It's not bad. It's, it's got legs. And it's got. Let's see if it takes it anywhere. Knows how to use them. Yeah. It, well, it, hoping. It, I'm it hoping. Never bags. I'm hoping. Nice. It, I, it couldn't. It couldn't hold my interest. I sat there for. You said ten minutes. I, I, yeah. I lasted about ten minutes and went. You know what? I, I, I've got toenails to cut. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wow, team. that's a visual I didn't yeah, need. Thank you. But uh, um, here, you want to see? No, <laughs> please, no. Dear God, I liked. It. I I did enjoy it. Now, I, I, but I think that uh, there's going to be if that if the kid who basically can listen to all of the phone conversations, he's going to get annoying really fast because he's Rain Man in the hell. Out oh, of he's that. Lawnmower yeah. Man. Yeah, mm-hmm. Lawnmower Rain Man. Yeah, he's Rain Man. Yeah, and, uh, and, and that was part of the wow. thing. You know, I'm going through this and watching. They're very it generic. Just does not. Yeah, does yes. not hold my interest and. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to give it another chance. Maybe I was in a bad mood or something it like that. Be. But but I'm looking at, at at the first ten minutes I watched of that and went, you know what? The cape was far better. Uh, the cape was better. I will started give you off that. much stronger. Uh, they're very generic. Now I think they got some interesting ideas where they go. I think the most interesting character is kind of the 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 bookish girl who can use all our senses. That's yeah, very cool. It, but it, 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 this whole show just kind of strikes me as NCIS with psionics. And uh, <laughs> huh. I mean, that's it, a yeah. good really, analogy, actually. And, and, it, and, and I really find the characters in NCIS to be far more interesting. I, you know, you I, I think I'm going to give this some time oh, yes. because I, I think it, I think that they can write this one up better if they've just got to really get on their game and start writing quickly. these characters up quickly. Yeah. yeah. Good day, Slicers. This is Skiznot from... Where am I from? I don't know. I'm from Perth. And I was riding on my quaddy looking for my dingo when I was thinking about Game of Thrones. 
Fear Dinkum, it's a great show. And I They're think I get a sick guys. joy out of seeing some nasty bloke getting what's coming to him. Best so but far. You know, I've noticed a lot of stories lately where the writers try to redeem some character who doesn't deserve it. I'm beginning to see some of this starting in Falling Skies. Oh, hey, you killed my mate, but I'll still let you cook for me. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, yeah. I had to eventually stop watching yeah. Ailey's because I got tired of, so, of watching that nice Sheila have to work together with Sloane. She just needed to say, okay, mission's over, and shot him in the face. So I was wondering what was some of your favorite revenge stories. Last one I really liked was uh, Man on Fire. But uh, that's pretty good one. Yeah. I'm in the frame of mind for another. All right. Good day, mates, and keep on slicing. Nice. That He's, was actually the best one. Probably the best one, but man, he was in an echoey room filled with jungle birds. Right, right. Um, no, no, no. He was, he was on the jungle cruise at Disneyland. Uh, <laughs> I've been on that. I didn't hear the captain go off, bam, 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 for the hippo. Oh, yeah, no, no. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. out. But uh, I think our real Australian listeners, this is how we pissed them off last time. I nice. probably. Yeah. I, if I remember correctly, that everybody tried to play, pull an accent, yeah. and all the Australian people went, oh, wait, up yours. So uh, uh, everybody else just needs to go to the Rainforest Cafe and basically um, <laughs> record their <laughs> bits, and you'll be fine. You know what we need? We need we need the Australian folks to do their best American accents. Oh, yeah. That's better. Yes. Do that. Oh, Come on. Is Gibson going to call And, and really uh, we need some Southern dialect. We need oh. a little bit of Bostonian. Bostonian. Absolutely. Do your best, guys. Yeah. Come Mid- on. Mid- Midwest, Midwest. Bring it on. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Midwest? We ain't got no accent. What are you talking about? (laughs) Yeah. Moving her along. (laughs) Good day, Slice of Sci-Fi. Oh, dear God. This is Crazy Joe from Tasmania. And I'm calling to ask you, mates, if uh, you got any news on uh, how you say. um, (laughs) How you say? How you say? Dundee 4. Oh, I've God. been waiting to hear some news on that movie. Please let me know. All right. <laughs> I've got a big glass of Foster's. And, uh, oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Foster's, it's crap enough. for beer. <clears throat> enough. Enough. We can't do any more of this. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I can't. We're we're long on, on anyway. I've got to have something here that's not. Yeah, something is good. In there. <laughs> something, something to end on. Okay. Hi, this is Gail in Northern California. Thank you, I was Gail. having a conversation with my dad this morning. We were talking about Matt Damon, and it occurred to me that he would have made a really good Captain America. Ooh, and then I thought no. I would ask yeah. you guys, who are some actors or actresses that haven't really done comic book movies that you think would be really good or really wow. classic in some role or wow. another? Wow. Um, that's a great meme right there. Me. I think that's uh, something to throw out to everybody yeah, listening. I think so. Should we go yeah. around the studio first? Or, uh, uh, I, go I got to think on it, man. That's I the weird thing. What do you got? You got something I, on it, evidently. You know, I, I, I really got to disagree. I don't think Matt Damon would maybe go yeah. Captain America. Mm. Um, I can see Matt Damon maybe being the Flash. Yes. Um, I think he can do Captain America, though, as well. Honestly, really? I mean, who, who Captain would, America, to, to me, to me, Captain America is far more gritty, and Matt Damon is just too much of a pretty boy. He did Bourne, of all things, and yeah. nobody ever thought he could pull off Bourne, and well, he no, does he a great did job. Really movie, good. But remember, in the in the whole Bourne thing, he is kind of this spy with, you know, kind of the everyman yeah, look. I guess you're right. Okay. And he's, he's just not there enough. I, I really do think he could have done Spider-Man. Yes, I think so. He's much more a, of a boy-ish hero right. than anything else. But Captain America, for me, is pushing it. You know, I, hmm. I would like to see, you know, if we flip it to the villains, I would have loved to see, say, uh, Steve Buscemi as the Scarecrow. Oh. Ooh, Ooh, that okay. would be amazing. Wow. There's that, there's an obscure actor named Jeremy, Jeremy Gambit. I think I've ruined his last name. But anyhow, he was in the Ice Queen. Mm-hmm. And I think he, I always thought he would have made a great Clark Kent. Okay. Mm. Yeah, because he had the look, he he had the right, you know, attitude. He sweet. He's a Canadian actor, I believe, but and he hasn't done much since. But um, yeah, I would have. I'd like to see more from the Canadians, the obscure Canadian actors. Wow. Well, I'm gonna think on this now. I yeah, have too. I, I, I've got to go through this. I, I mean, I, I'm think, stuck on Matt yeah. Damon. Really interesting who idea, would, though. Who would Matt Damon be good as? And I, I'm I'm. I'm having he's, a hard time with that. Uh, to me, he's got to be more of that, you know, less the, you know, real strong superhero and more of the just kind of... He might have been a good the, Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think you're right. I'm serious. And he no, may, I, he, no, that's and, not a bad yeah. idea, actually. 
And he mm-hmm. may have actually made made a good Batman because I think he could pull that Playboy aspect off. Mm-hmm. Now Christian Bale, I, I think, is far better, mm-hmm. but I think Matt Damon would have sufficed. Uh, uh, Christian B- Bale has that kind of of, of hoity arrogance that's well, necessary has, for Bruce and Wayne. He has the dichotomy for the role. Yeah, and I think Matt Damon's too short to be Batman. Uh, yeah. uh, Tom Cruise, anyone? Uh, Michael yeah. Keaton is not yeah. exactly a giant. Uh, yeah, man. Exactly. I don't know. It's like you know, you're a little short to be a stormtrooper, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ooh, food for thought folks why don't you give us a call in and give us your thoughts on who you think that you know who hasn't played a superhero might be a good one absolutely absolutely you know that number 206-339 trek that's 206-339-8735 you can also record them and send them to me at mike at slice of sci-fi.com and uh we will be back with uh, more show next week we got tons of really great stuff happening um, oh gosh, interviews, we oh, got yeah. more, more Eureka. More Eureka. Absolutely. So stay tuned for that. See you next week, folks.